Welcome to the MSDW Podcast. I'm Jason Gumpert, editor at msdynamicsworld.com. Today we continue our Dynamics AX to Dynamics 365 for Finance and Operations Upgrade Series. And this might be a tough one for some fans of the cloud. We hear today from Darren Goebel, VP of Technology at Prefort Manufacturing in Mount Pleasant, Texas. Prefort has run Dynamics AX for many years, including some innovative use cases on the shop floor and in the warehouse, but that may soon change. As an on-premises ERP user today, Prefort operates in a rural location where, despite internet services from multiple ISPs, they do lose connection to the outside world from time to time. Because of that, the company has been slow to adopt cloud services and still maintains its own data center and IT expertise for maintaining its ERP and other systems. After lengthy discussions with Microsoft, Darren says his team is nearing the conclusion that the company will likely migrate away from AX to another vendor in the future rather than move to FNO in the public cloud. He speaks frankly about his observations and his research, and he explains why he most likely does not see Microsoft's ERP priorities as the best match for the future of this organization. This episode of the MSDW podcast is sponsored by Avalara, a leading provider of SaaS tax compliance software. Is your business considering moving its Dynamics AX instance to the cloud? If so, you'll need a solution for effectively managing sales tax to ensure your company stays tax compliant as it embarks on the path toward digital transformation. With the ability to offer accurate, real-time tax calculations and returns, Avalara can help you save time and resources on tax compliance. Want to learn more about Avalara? Go to www.avalara.com. That's www.avalara.com. Hey, Darren. So th- thanks for joining again today. Appreciate you being here. Thank you. And uh, it sounds like your your firm has a, a pretty interesting story on its journey with uh, with ERP, with Dynamics AX uh, up to this point. And uh, Peter and I are uh, interested to get a little more feedback from you on uh, sort of where you're at, what your journey really looks like. Um, can you tell us a little bit more about... Um, about uh, the company you work for, uh, and um, you know maybe a bit about what it does, what 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 the company's uh, business is, if you don't mind. But then also, um, sort of how you got started, how you got involved in the in the Microsoft ERP channel. Okay, uh, so the name of the company I work for is called Prefort Manufacturing. Um, I've been with the company for about eleven years. When I started at the company, uh, about 99, 98% of our business was ranch and rodeo equipment. We, uh, we manufacture um, uh, products for large animals, uh, horses, cows, sheep, dogs. Uh, and over that 11 year span since I've been here, um, another part of our business has grown. Uh, it's a steel processing side of our business. And that is now about 65% of our uh, business now. Um, so we went from a very uh, a discreet uh, manufacturing company to steel processing is almost, um, it's you know, all this commodity, but it's almost uh, like a process type manufacturing as opposed to discreet. Um, very different from for manufacturing the ranch and rodeo stuff. So uh, we, we bought AX and implemented it. Uh, we went live on January 1st, 2011. We're on AX 2009, uh, if I didn't mention that. And we've been running it ever since. We've done um, quite a few modifications of our uh, on our own. Um, we did a considerable amount of the implementation ourselves. And uh, and that's where we're at today. We've we've started uh, a couple times looking at upgrading to D365. We've got serious about doing that or about upgrading our ERP earlier this year. Um, my thought was that if we're going to upgrade our ERP, it's probably a good time to to look and see what other uh, vendors are out there and what they're offering. Um, I, I know D365 is cloud only. Um, yeah, there, there's no other option. Well, they have the option of, of offsite or 
uh, on site or on prem. Um, but I've been told many times by Microsoft that it'll never be fully featured uh, or a fully featured release like D365. So, um, so that's where we started. I had. Uh, so let me let me bring Peter in just um, just to maybe share because he's known you for a long time also, and he's worked with uh, with with your company also. Um, Peter, uh, anything else you would add? Because um, you you've seen you've seen what what Preferred has done on 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 their ERP journey, uh, you know, on and off over the years, right? Yeah, um, I, you know, I was uh, you know I was involved with them a lot in the early days and. One of the things I was fascinated by is I didn't realize the kind of the move to the, um, you know, more process manufacturing, which is interesting um, because that does, you know, present a lot of, um, you know, issues. Um, but, you know, my questions, I have so many questions here, but, you know, my questions are, you know, around what, you know, what portion of a decision to look in another direction is, you know, the cloud only, the fact that, uh, the on-premise version of D365 is being positioned as not, you know, ever going to be fully functional, right? Perhaps the fact that uh, that process manufacturing functionality, um, you know, how how well, you know, uh, implemented is that in D365 and that uh, part of the of the decision. So actually, you know, just a million questions here, and I, I'm not even sure if, if I have the right order to ask them in. <laughs> so no, Darren, just keep going on. You know my, um, you know my thought process. My first thing is, is as you guys transition from the, um, you know, kind of that repetitive manufacturing model, to the uh, process. You know, what kind of issues did that present for you guys? Uh, well, it's not very fun in uh, AX two thousand nine. We don't, uh, we don't own the process module, process manufacturing module. Um, so, you know, a, a typical example uh, for us would be we bring in master coils of steel and we have uh, two different slitters that slit these master coils into smaller pieces. Um, you can think of them as, you know, long ribbons, if you will, mm -hmm. of steel. Uh, we turn those into tubing or, you know, pipe or, uh, and that's all shapes and sizes. Problem with that right. in AX2009 without the process manufacturing piece is uh <clears throat> for each cut you're going to make on that master coil that's a work order so i may have one master coil that i'm going to make eight different cuts on it and that all happens simultaneously on the machine mm -hmm. but i have i have to create eight different work orders for that uh, so that's you know uh eight times the number of transactions that i really should have to make <laughs> i should sure. You should be able to have a production order that says do this and this is my outputs um so that's you know that's a typical example of some of the problems we run into uh, uh trying trying to be a you know at least a half of a process company uh there's another problem that we had is in that the folks that did help us implement it uh implement the product didn't set up multi-site properly and now we have multiple sites so that's been a <laughs> a constant thorn in our side uh, and it's not one of those things that's easy to go undo um, mm -hmm. because you have to it's not really uh, it's not really a re-implementation I've, I've worked out enough code to where i can make it happen the problem is i got to go change uh i got to create all new bombs and, and routes you know, for each site, uh, you know, it's it's a lot of work to to get there because it wasn't done properly up front. Anyway, um, <clears throat> so yeah, a lot, a lot of challenges uh, both from the initial implementation and the and the process manufacturing side. Um, no, I so what I. What the hell was your question, Peter? <laughs> <laughs> you can well, that. the uh, you know one of the things is that um, you could be sitting there looking at um, the software that you have, your business model completely changed, and all of a sudden you find, hey, we don't have a functional solution, um, you know, for the vast majority of our business requirements, 
and I'd get off the software, you know, uh, quickly as well. But it sounds to me, you know, when I think about this, there's a, um, you know, there's from the functional standpoint, there's a combination of setup issues of, you know, functionality that wasn't available at the time that you implemented this version. And my other guess is, you know, tons of um, modifications to, um, you know, to address some of these issues that are probably going to be, you know, pretty tough to unwind uh, to move forward, uh, even if the new, you know, process uh, functionality works for you guys, which is my next logical question. Did you look at, you know, what they have now as far as uh, process manufacturing? Because I know back in the day when you guys got this uh, and process wasn't an issue, process was a third-party application, and, and now it's, um, you know, a part of the core software. Right. Yeah, we did look at it. In fact, we changed partners uh, to Fullscope, who, um, my understanding, they're the ones who wrote the process manufacturing piece. Yep. Um, that got purchased well, by Microsoft and embedded. Yep. Right. Uh, we have looked at that. Um, in in the 365 uh, side, and it does handle some of the some of the needs uh, that that we have. But I tell you, I'll, I can tell you this: uh, Microsoft out of the box doesn't handle a steel company or a steel processing company very well. Um, now there there are uh, well, there's one company I'm aware of that has uh, a third-party piece that I can buy that handles still very well. Um, I mean, you're talking about uh, all kinds of attributes related to steel. Uh, if you think about laser cutting on laser machines and you, want, you only want to use half the half of a sheet and you want to put the other half back as a remnant and having the software yeah. keep track of all that, right. uh, AXL box doesn't do that. Um, <clears throat> The third party piece uh, does handle that. But the problem is, as we start down this journey of, okay, let's see what's out there. Um, and, and as we went through, we let uh, D365 have their, their time in showing us that. Uh, the biggest, one of the biggest problems we had as a company is there was uh, about, if I recall, eight different add ins we we're going to have to buy to get to the functionality that we need to run our company. Um, to me, that's utterly ridiculous. I mean, I understand their model and that mm -hmm. uh, that it's a partner-based model and everything we don't do, we have a partner that does it. But, uh, you know, I'm sorry that I live in 2019 and my ERP can't handle EDI by itself. That's just utterly ridiculous to me. Um, <laughs> I have to go to a third party in order to have EDI, uh, which is a, you know, a, an ancient technology in and of itself, uh, but I have to go to a third party to, to have that within my ERP. Um, <clears throat> I can't handle my steel. One of the best things we did see in 365 was the Blue Horseshoe stuff they bought. Um, we were actually looking at Blue Horseshoe before Microsoft bought them. And uh, I mean, it's actually right at the time they bought them. Um, it, it, that's a good product. It's probably the best warehousing piece we've seen out of all the other ERP vendors we've looked at. Um, but other than that, uh, from our perspective, from 2011 when we went live on AX 2009 to today, Microsoft has ignored manufacturing. The only the only real change we've seen uh, on 365 is that it's now runs in a browser and it's in the cloud. Uh, <laughs> um, and uh, I've had several people from Microsoft, you know, uh, actually admit, you know, that, yeah, that's the case. They've done very little in the manufacturing space. And then I get the, you know, the age old promise, oh, but that's coming next, right? Right. Uh, um, and, and, I, and I guess because a lot of manufacturing jobs left the United States over the last 10 years, maybe that's why they did it. I don't know. Um, but they pretty much ignored it. Uh, uh, for 10 years, the uh, distribution piece um, that, that we need uh, didn't exist in 2009, so we pretty much wrote that ourselves. Uh, they've now written their TMS piece 
uh, into 365, which looks a whole lot like kind of what we wrote. <laughs> um, so there are some pieces uh, in terms of the modifications that we made. Those don't bother me. I've got a very talented team. Um, but a lot, a lot of the mods that we've made, the, a lot of those have gone into the, uh, the product now. So that's a good thing. But the fact that some of the base type stuff um, that we need to run a fully, a full fledged manufacturing company and you know manufacturing and distribution company, uh, not ever not everything's there. And uh, when when I started adding up costs, um, it was considerable. My initial quote from Microsoft was, um, I don't, I'm not sure a stronger word other than ridiculous, uh, the, the initial quote for just 365 was utterly ridiculous. Um, and by the time I got that negotiated down, it was about 25% of what was originally quoted to me. Um, <sighs> <laughs> you know, uh, I, I, I have to admit, I was pretty irritated with them at that point. I run a Microsoft shop. We run, Mar you know, uh, I use Microsoft for everything. Email, no. SQL Server, all my servers are... Yeah. Um, You're a platform partner. partner. Huh? You're a Microsoft platform company. You use yeah, all very their much products. So. Yeah. so I got a question for you. Um, the... Um, you know, th this cost to implement uh, this D365, that came from Microsoft directly? Yeah, I didn't, well, I didn't get, this, I'm talking about licensing costs, just gotcha. what it's going to cost me. Um, you know, what I'm paying Microsoft right now in terms of maintenance fees versus what it would cost me to go to 365, just licensing or subscription or whatever you want to call it, mm -hmm. was, was four plus times what I pay today. <clears throat> are you, I mean, are you paying anything today for a 2009 system? It's out of, it's out of support, right? So there's no, there's no maintenance fees even to pay. Are, are there? Yeah, there, you have to, <laughs> well, that's part of the trick now, isn't it? Um, so in order to, if we were to decide to go to 365, um, we have to be quote unquote current on our maintenance in order to get the, the discounts that they've been talking to us about. Um, so, yeah. Which means, back, pay, which, which means back paying all the ones you missed. Well, I haven't stopped my maintenance yet. Oh, I mean, okay. it just went out of uh, quote-unquote support in October. Okay. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, that's, that's, that's seriously a question for us. Our, our maintenance is due in July. Uh, so it's going to be a question this come July. Do I do I pay that anymore or not? Uh, I'm paying for nothing. I'm paying for hedging a bet of whether I go to 365 or not. And, and just for just to understand a little more, what's the um, what's the scale of your AX system? Like how many users approximately? Um, uh, well, we have <laughs> uh, we have 160 concurrent users. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We have, uh, we, and we're an extensive user of the business connector. The business connector, what's, what is that for? Business connector allows you to make calls from outside of AX through the business connector into AX. Okay. Got it. So hopefully doing some functionality, uh, you know, without that concurrent license. That's correct. Now that um, that 160 concurrent uh, license uh, quote, uh, because in the D365 world things are named ver versus you know AX where it was just you know whoever was in at the moment. Yeah. Um, is that Bone. the is that the 160 uh, named that you would need for D365? Uh, uh, actually, no, we wouldn't need. Um, yeah, the the whole licensing model is. Uh, you have to get a college degree on too. Um, I wouldn't need 160 named because of the various ones. I, I would end up getting 
uh, and I, I had I don't have the counts in front of me, but I would end up getting device uh, device licenses for sure. basically all my kiosks, all my and all my forklifts. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> So you have shop floor control data collection devices and warehousing devices? Yeah, we wrote, we wrote all of our data collection ourselves, mm -hmm. uh, utilizing the business connector. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, we have uh, about 125 forklifts running around campuses with tablets. And, um, oh no, I'm sorry, about 125 kiosks and about 200 forklifts running around uh, with tablets on them. So. That's an incredible operation. Um, you know, one of the, again, sorry, my, this is like a side issue, but there's so many fascinating things you bring up. One of our earlier, um, one of our initial podcasts, we talked about, you know, the, uh, what we call a hybrid model. Um, we, were, we were surprised when we first started talking to folks um, on their, you know, thought processes, the D365. We thought that everybody was just going to say, yeah, we want to go to the cloud. But almost everyone we first, uh, you know, initially spoke to, the, the question was, uh, hey, um, what's the differences for us between cloud and on-premise? And we want to analyze those two. And we we're very surprised that people were interested in doing that analysis. And so one of the things that we first came up was, you know, on-premise, on-cloud. But then we also came up with this issue of the hybrid model where if you wanted to be in the cloud, but you had shop floor control, you know, or point of sale or anything like that, you know, were those signals going back and forth fast enough to the cloud so that things didn't time out on the shop floor or, you know, with a uh, forklift? Uh, was there any discussion on that, on how you're being going to be handle, able to handle that if you went to the cloud model? Uh, well, that's a very good question. And um, I'm, one of the reasons I'm not sold on the cloud uh, is is that reason um, among many. Uh, first of all, our company is out in the middle of nowhere, right? I got I got three different ISPs and I uh, that, that come in that we can switch to, uh, and I've come in to work to where all three of our ISPs are down. So <laughs> um, oh, wow. me being a, a cloud only model. Um, doesn't really work, uh, and I think it's fairly nearsighted uh, or arrogant, however you want to look at it, um, to think everybody's uh, always going to be uh, online, right, without downtime. Mm -hmm. uh, my my server room here, um, I'm not going to say it's state of the art, but I have uh, I have plenty of resource to run any ERP system I want to. All my storage is flash storage. All my servers are within three years old. Um, and so I, I started having these conversations with Microsoft about that, right? And I, and I forget the gentleman's name, it's in my notes somewhere, but, uh, you know, they were trying to talk me into why, you know, why I should be, uh, wow, it was silly thinking that I don't want to be in the cloud. Mm -hmm. And so I had this conversation with this gentleman. He said, you know, there's three pillars that we run on. One is um, total cost of ownership, right? And, and he finally admitted after about a 30-minute discussion with me on that one subject that Microsoft looks at going to the cloud or being on-prem as a push for the customer, although they don't market it that way. Mm-hmm which I thought was interesting. Well, and he, and this was a Microsoft guy. This was a Microsoft guy. <laughs> um, the other part was, <clears throat> you know, if you're on the cloud, how you can always be, you're, you're always on the most current piece of software. Eh, okay, y'all may know better than I do, but I'm pretty sure if I modify the software, I'm not going to just be able to throw in the new version as they release it. I'm going to have to, Review that, test that, and then implement that, just like I would on an on an on-prem solution, wouldn't I? Um, <clears throat> so I'm, I'm not really sure I buy the you know you're always going to be on the latest. Uh, I, I don't think that's actually true. <laughs> that may shorten the cycle, um, but uh, I'm from Missouri. I think they're going to have to prove that to me. Yeah, you know, I, when I think about, um, you know, when I think about ERP in the cloud 
and I think you're the perfect example about this is, um, you know, good ERP in the cloud is uh, QuickBooks because you have, you know, three or four <laughs> users, they're not modified and, um, you know, they pay their uh, gym membership every month uh, on a regular basis, right? Right. If, um, if I take a enterprise, um, you know, ERP solution like yours to the cloud today, based on where it is, on a daily basis, you're going to have multiple fire alarms going off, you know, at Microsoft, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so what happens, it's going to impact the Windows team, the Azure team, um, you know, the security team, the database, you know, all these different things. Uh, because None of who's responsible. Correct. So, <laughs> yeah. Right. So that, it's the other group. Yeah. And so that, that I, you, you almost got, you're almost a test case for all the different areas where it's still problematic to just across the board say, you know, yeah, this is, um, you know, perfect for everyone. Just, you know, let's get this up into the cloud. And the thing that the thing that we have found in discussions, you know, now with you and with other folks is that there is a big uh, dichotomy between what you are told, you know, from the sales licensing guys versus, you know, the engineers that have to come in and actually, you know, architect and engineer these systems that are going to work for you. Mm -hmm. Did, uh, Darren, I'm just curious, did, did, Conversations about hybrid come up with with Microsoft the idea of having the the, the uh, an architecture that does replicate to a local instance because I know it's been on Microsoft's list of things to to uh, deploy or to to have sort of improved on for D three sixty five. So actually, no, uh, I I brought up hybrid. I, I thought you know from being an on prem guy and they're talking about the cloud. It's it's to me it seems like an obvious answer would be a hybrid solution, right? Uh, my document management stuff, that can go in the cloud. I don't care about that. Uh, most of my AR and AP kind of stuff, that can go in the cloud. Um, you know, you're not going to end the world if you can't pay an, uh, an AP invoice today or, you know, within an hour because of an ISP break. My manufacturing and my, my shop floor movement in a manufacturing company, uh, yeah, not something I want to put in the cloud, <laughs> uh, very transaction based and things moving, you know, there's, there's a thousand people out there in my plants doing things all day long. Um, and if I don't have connectivity to generate you know, whatever master call numbers or batch numbers or new items or be able to move product from here to there or produce product, uh, you kind of shut down the company. Um, and we're a privately held company, and that kind of ticks off the owners when I shut down the company. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I mean, I was very surprised that wasn't even an option. Um, so, Peter, you alluded to the to the post I put on LinkedIn a while back about um, me not being thrilled about the cloud. Yeah. Uh, and my, my comment was basically as I was going through, yeah, I talked – my, I think I talked to 20 different ERP vendors, and um, you know, some of them I was pretty sure wouldn't be able to cut the mustard here. But I, I wanted to see what people were doing, and uh -huh. and uh, you know, I think almost every single one of them talked to me about the cloud, and not a single one of them could prove to me that it was cost justifiable. Um, that there was a you know that that was a better option than to run on prem you know everybody wants to go down the path of well you don't you don't have to have a server room anymore okay great but i already have <laughs> <it>. <laughs> you right. know and guess what here's where the real arrogance piece comes into play you're not the only application i'm running i have other applications to run <laughs> in in store to run my company not just erp uh, I have a whole separate logistics company that i have to run that i use sql server for that we use client server uh, technologies for <clears throat> I have you know there's a slew of applications that we run on prem it's not just the RP uh, so the, the arrogance of thinking well you can put ERP in the cloud and you know you can run your entire company no that's uh, completely incorrect um, so the, the whole total cost of ownership in terms of servers you know it gets blown out of the water pretty quickly uh, and as I mentioned the, I had a conversation with a gentleman 
Yeah, Mark Soff and he admitted it to me. You know, that they they see that as a push. Um, <clears throat> you know, it, it's an interesting time. I, I think companies like yours are just many. Uh, it seems like more more and more of them are are starting to to really examine these decisions. Companies that have done a lot of maybe similar things and are in similar positions to you. So it, it's going to be a very interesting time for Microsoft because they've they've been growing the the F and O cloud business and it is almost all cloud i mean they say almost all the new companies that join it are using cloud as you probably wouldn't be surprised uh at this point and i i think it's right. it's going to be very interesting to see um you know when when companies like yours t take uh, a measure of that because the ones that that joined early i think were the ones that had had more flexibility or saw more uh didn't see those didn't see those issues uh, those sort of cloud first things as limitations they saw them as acceptable and were willing to just work with them um and just didn't have the same concerns that you have um but boy there are a lot of ax 2009 and, and probably even 2012 um customers out there who um you know might hear might hear similarities to their own situation in, in, in what you're talking about yeah, uh, it's it's interesting to me. We were early adopters of Office 365, and quite honestly, uh, wow, that's that's <laughs> uh, un, uh, you know as far as Office goes, it's Office, right? But uh, we've never been hacked more than we have uh, before uh, since going to Office 365. Um, you know, their their response to that is you know put. Um, <clears throat> multi-factor authentication in place. Uh, yeah, easier said than done at a manufacturing plant um, to have multi-site or um, multi-factor authentication, one of which they want to want you to use your cell phone for that. Well, you know, some of them are people who don't have a company to pay your cell phone, you know, kind of have an issue with that. Uh, oh, you want me to use my personal cell phone for company business and you want me to be okay with that. <laughs> um, I think that's kind of hilarious. Uh, the the whole cloud thing. I think uh, I've been I've been on the earth long enough to know that there's there's no such thing as one size fits all, um, you know, uh, and to think that you know the next best thing is always the next best thing. I think I think the cloud has great potential to do, you know, lots of cool things, but I I don't think it's an end all be all, um, you know, and it's being sold by many vendors as a as a one size fits all kind of kind of concept. <laughs> I remember I remember your post now. I think it kind of had that it kind of had that flavor to it like uh, you were afraid you were like uh, Galileo, you know, <laughs> and yeah. that you were going to be branded a heretic because you pointed out some, <laughs> you know, obvious laws of gravity, right? Right. The interesting thing, if you if you can go back and find that post, is the people who responded. The ones that I, I got chastised by were Microsoft employees. Yeah. I <coughs> so for the most that. part, the people who were giving me kudos were other people like me, other IT folks. So I thought I thought that was pretty funny. <laughs> that so, the division was between the vendor and the actual users. And the buyer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I gotta go dig uh, that up and see if I can. <clears throat> Darren, I, uh, go ahead, Darren. Please. I, I was gonna say I read an article just the other day, and and I didn't realize it was as dated as it was. Uh, it, anyway, it was from 2017, and it was talking about cloud adoption. And, uh, and their article came out to say that most people were adopting the cloud back then because they were, it was a uh, fear of losing out. They they mm -hmm. <laughs> they were everybody's jumping to the cloud because they think everybody else is jumping to the cloud, right? Because that's what all the marketing and the sales from all these different vending uh, vendors are telling them. And so people are like, oh, you know, we got to go to the cloud because everybody else is, and I'm going to miss out on something. Um, meanwhile, I was running Office 365 in the cloud, and I was pretty unimpressed. So uh, I wasn't going to just leap out there with my ERP. Uh, and, you know, and it seems to me, um, as more and more and more people dump all their company's secrets out there in Azure or on AWS, it seems like those become bigger and bigger and bigger targets for the hackers. Um, just seems to me. You no, know, we haven't had we haven't had the big ERP system hack yet, and I'm just waiting for it, right? Uh, yeah. You know, Darren, uh, there's, there's an interesting uh, side. Not that we've omitted it, at least, right? <laughs> yeah. 
there's an interesting side light to this. Um, you know, there are some things that I've seen in 30 years of ERP, um, you know, that are interesting to me uh, from an observational standpoint. One of them is, I think, evidenced by this cloud hysteria is that not all technology needs to be implemented, right? right. So, um, you know, for high speed, you know, character based input to an accounting system, Windows and the mouse wasn't exactly a great idea, right? <laughs> exactly. You know what I mean? And so this is just, oh, yeah. yeah so, so if you think about it, we keep on adding these technologies on what's, you know, at the core should be a very simple, you know, transactional based system. Um, but it, they're, they become more and more difficult to, you know, to maintain, run and use. But that's, it's an interesting, um, you know, it's an interesting observation that people have that fear of missing out. Yeah, I mean, you remember printing your customer invoices out on line printers as opposed to laser printers, <coughs> which were much more economical and much faster than laser printers ever were. But everybody went to laser printing. But Darren, one of the one of the interesting things that we found um, is some companies in your position, the decision that they made as far as do we go on premise, do we go in the cloud with D three sixty five, the decision was. What we're going to do is we're going to upgrade to AXR3 and potentially we will put that in a private cloud, you know, to run it well, which is great. Um, but we're going to stabilize on the R3 version and let everything else catch up so that an upgrade is more efficient, you know, makes more sense, et cetera. And that was one of the things that I had, you know, was totally, uh, you know, blindsided by that people would make that decision. And which, of course, leads to the, uh, you know, I never thought, even though I should have, that people would look in, uh, you know, another direction as well. Yeah, I'm not real, I'm not a big fan of being dictated by uh, my, you know, dictated to by my vendor uh, how I should run my company. <clears throat> so, you know, Microsoft saying, well, if you're going to use our product, you're going to you're going to run on the cloud and you're going to run on Azure, by the way. Um <laughs> As opposed to some of the other vendors who say uh, that have told me, uh, you can run in the cloud, you can run in the private cloud, you can run on prem, you can run on uh, hybrid models. We don't really care. We just want your business. Um, you know, that's much more agreeable uh, to me because uh, I'm the one who's buying it, right? So, uh, being dictated to by by the by the vendor is fairly off-putting um, mm -hmm. and uh, once I have all my eggs in that basket um, and they decide to make some change that I don't agree with I can't switch ERPs overnight like I do my underwear right right uh, you know I, I can't make uh, that big of a switch that fast so that, and then they kind of got you um, and you know, I'm sure they, there's all kind of assurances that they're not going to do something uh, that that you don't want them to do, right? You know, like make you go to the cloud <laughs> uh, <laughs> if you don't want to, uh, you know, uh, like they're doing right now. Um, it's funny you brought you brought up R3 because we we toyed with the idea of going to R3 a couple of times, and those poor folks uh, that are on R3. Uh, their their support runs out this year in 2020. Um, you know, and they've been a lot of those have been on their product what less than five years. You know, I gotta, <laughs> you know, I have to guess right that when reality hits, that um, you know this move is not going to be as quick and easy as um, you know everybody had hoped. That they're going to have to push that out, right? Uh, I'm, on the R3 piece, I, I'm sure they will. Uh, well, I, I say that. I'm sure they will. Uh, I'd certainly hope for the, the, their customers' sake. Um, and support, like on 2009, you know, if you have a premium support contract, um, doesn't expire until, I think it's this year or next year. Or I'm, I'm sorry, I think it's either 20 or 21. But <clears throat> here's the deal. On, on Microsoft, on the X2009, I've called them twice in 10 years called them twice in 10 years and i can i remember both calls distinctly because it took me 14 hours to get to the right guy or right person 
to tell me to do something so simple and easy that it should be a knowledge base article out there, easily accessible. Um, <clears throat> but it wasn't. Now, I'll give you an example of one of those. Uh, the AOS on 2009 wouldn't start. It, you know, for some reason, it just flat wouldn't start. No error messages, no nothing. And we finally get to the right guy. We actually changed time zone three times while we're on the call. Um, and uh, this this one gentleman who was, I want to say he was in Dubai, um, told me, you need to go truncate the, these two tables, the sys client table and the sys server table, and and then try your AOS. And sure enough, you know, two simple SQL commands, <coughs> uh, truncate the tables, and my AOS, up, AOS is up and running. It took me 14 hours to get to that answer, so my plant was down for 14 hours. So I, I thank the gentleman and asked him where I sent the bill um, for us being down for 14 hours. He just kind of chuckled and hung up. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, so when Azure goes down or, or, you know, they decided to move me from one plant or, you know, one facility to the next and my authentication doesn't happen with AD properly um, and my plants go down, you know, who's responsible for that? So that doesn't happen, or does it, yeah. that doesn't happen, does it? Other than so, without getting it, without getting into specifics, <laughs> uh, you've talked to twenty ERP vendors, right? I have. Um, do you not have a day job? Is my first question, and my <laughs> second question is: um, Are there a group of those guys? You know, because I doubt there's that one, right? But is there a, a group in general that you think has an approach? that is um you know better for somebody in your situation uh is there a group um, now, are there two or three guys that have this you know figured out better or have a something that you you know could get behind easier uh there are uh i would say there you know we narrowed it down we were down to a kind of a leading candidate um although uh we hadn't ruled out 365 yet uh, because we wanted to see <clears throat> wanted to see it full blown with the uh, the add-in for steel. Um, although the cost model was considerably more uh, than the leading candidate, um, there was another company that was very well received. Uh, we liked everything about it. Uh, except for it doesn't, it didn't handle um, dimensional inventory uh, yet. Um, apparently, that's on the roadmap, but it wasn't there yet. But other than that, it was much more, you know, it was visually appealing. Uh, their analytics were tremendous. Um, it, it was a very, very nice product. Um, so I think, I, I think those were kind of the. Th you know the well the later uh that other one and then 365 was kind of on the cusp but the original demo to 365 um to, to the project team which is about 15 people the uh feedback i got from the project team was not flattering at all mm -hmm. not in a, not in a single area and, and the and um, some uh, of these others oh, sorry, sorry, some of these others um going back to some of the Concerns you talked about earlier, uh, built-in EDI, um, you know, steel, uh, steel for specific needs, um, you know, ability to run on-prem. It, it, some of these other top choices or top candidates, it checks those boxes for you. Yeah, the mm -hmm. the um, you know, uh, yes, the, the short answer to your question. Analytics were built in; they were tremendous. Uh, you don't have to pop out the BI and, and pop back in. Uh, I will say uh, again that the Blue Horseshoe stuff, the warehousing piece from <clears throat> 365 is probably the best we saw. Um, some close candidates, I mean, close number twos, but it, I think that uh, was probably the best warehousing piece we saw. Uh, me, manufacturing. Me yeah, the ahead. comment I got on manufacturing and production was it's the same thing we've got now, except it's in the cloud. 
that's that was the comment I got back from all my production folks that saw the 365 demo. Mm. <clears throat> I yeah, think. Me, the, go ahead, go ahead Jason. I'm sorry. All right. I mean, just the other thing I would just note is one of the underlying issues, perhaps, and and it's supported by the fact that you're really considering uh, the move to another vendor is the 365 option is not any easier or lower priced or saving you anything other uh, compared to a re-implementation on another system it sounds like you you've kind of already reached that conclusion too which is not going to help microsoft yeah 365 is a re-implementation right yeah. You know, some and, and, and in on, fairness, uh, in fairness, I mean, the best explanation I've heard of 2009 for people looking back on it now, uh, not, uh, other, you know, sort of consultants and maybe probably touched on it in this podcast in the past, Peter, is, you know, it, it was almost better described as a development platform at this point than, uh, you know, than an ERP in some people's minds. Uh, it's interesting you say that because, um, the partner that was demoing 365 <clears throat> to us, uh, once they kind of started realizing um, the crowd was not impressed, they, they started referring to it more as a platform as opposed to an ERP product. Hmm. Uh, so now the question is, well, okay, which one are you? You know, if you're not an ERP product and you're a platform, why are you so damn expensive? <laughs> hmm. um, <clears throat> So, so I got a question. I, I do have a question here because, um, in, and I, you know, I think back about this first, uh, you know, being a big thing in the Great Plains world, right? When Microsoft uh, picked those guys up, that, um, you know, in that whole mid market, um, one of the things that was really difficult uh, from a standpoint of being an accounting software or an ERP software was you constantly had to spend way more money than you could afford keeping up with Microsoft, right? The latest uh, Windows, uh, mostly, you know, in those days. And then when Microsoft bought Great Plains, for an example, that thing went out the window, right? right? And one of the really great reasons for being on Great Plains was, well, look, Microsoft owns it. So it's going to work with the latest, greatest version of Windows. And it's going to have that great uh, integration with Excel, while all these other guys are trying to figure it out. Um, from the standpoint of all these other platform things that you do, right? Is there this net loss of these other companies that may have better functionality, for example, but holy mackerel, they're constantly trying to figure out, you know, where is Microsoft zigging and zagging because the rest of your platform is Microsoft and how do we operate in that environment? You know what I mean? So there's kind of, to me, there's always that kind of give and take on that is, you know, do you have a um, thought on that? Um, my, my thought, what I, what I would tell those vendors is quit trying to do, quit trying to be a follower to Microsoft and do what you do best. Um, <clears throat> like I said, I, I've been a Microsoft guy for 30 something years and I can't really claim that I am that anymore. Uh, they've disappointed me in, in almost every um, area of their products that I use to where, you know, I've started looking um, at other other vendors, other products, and, and there's some out there that are just fantastic. Uh, you just have to look for them. <coughs> uh, we're quickly moving our virtualization from Hyper-V to Linux right now. Uh, <laughs> um, so uh, the zigging and zagging, I, I think a lot of that's quite intentional. Um, and oh, I don't think it's, I don't think it's, uh, I think that's for, to be in Microsoft's best interest and not their customers. Um, <coughs> no, I think there's an, ar yeah, I mean, you, that, there's an argument to be made on that for, you know, cloud, the, the, the decision to really be cloud focused with, with, uh, 365 FNO, it's, you know, on the one hand, Microsoft says they, they saw the market moving that way and I, I, I can't. Um, argue about the the larger market opportunity for cloud ERP versus on prem, um, but at the same time, you know they also made a decision that that's where there's the most benefit for them um, rather than trying to trying to maintain a, an on prem version too. I mean they've been they've been dragging on you know support for that since 365 came out, and I think there's a it's because it's their uh, you know their decision around that. 
yeah. for themselves. Sure. Right. Sure. Yeah. I, you know, I, I think, you know, just sitting here listening to you, the fact that we're saying cloud version versus the on-prem version, um, I mean, even just hearing that sounds silly as opposed to, you know, that ought to be a configuration within the software as opposed to a version or a, or a, or a mandate. You follow me? You know, yeah. As the different functions within an ERP, what would you like that to be, Mr. Customer? Would you like, like that piece to be in the cloud or would you like that piece to be on-prem? Uh, it seems like it's a checkbox, not a not a company decision. Yeah, there's, there's a whole story, I'm sure, and I don't know all of it of, as to how that Microsoft's position on that has changed since the release of, of uh, 365 FNO. Um, because it has, I mean, their, their position has evolved over the years now, um, now that we're, what, three years in, uh, or more with, with FNO, where they, they had full plans for on-premise, on-premises, and then they had some plans, and now I'm not, I'm really not sure exactly what their position is. I know that their sales are all going to cloud, um, or the, the vast majority of new implementations are, uh, but yeah, it's, uh, uh, we could do a whole, a whole, uh, I don't know. A whole piece just on that. Yeah, I think you know. I, I think the bottom line is that um, ERP um, in the cloud. There are certainly you know some great um, number of customers that are going to benefit from that, especially sure. if it's their first you know ERP solution. You know, stepping into that. I, I just think that for that hardcore, you know, distribution manufacturing enterprise level integrations with legacy systems, shop floor control, you know, all this kind of stuff. It's a heavy lift. Mm. It is. Uh, I can tell you one of the, you know, it's one of uh, D365's big competitors. Um, one of the companies that we looked at. And, uh, and by the way, I'm, I'm fine with, with talking about other, other companies by name if you are, but if you want to keep them quiet, that's, that I understand. It, it doesn't matter to me. You know. uh, the one I'm talking about now is that uh, Epicor. Um, I, th I found it interesting because they, they do a lot of cloud marketing as well. But ha having gone to their, um, I forget what they call it, it's their trade show. Um, and there are CEOs out there talking. Uh, <coughs> their, their number of cloud customers versus on-prem customers is, <laughs> it's, it's pretty small. Uh, I, I don't remember the numbers off the top of my head, uh, but Steve, um, Steve's their CEO, he was saying he felt uh, over the next, you know, next five years that their customer base will probably end up being 60% on-prem, 40% in the cloud. <clears throat> Which is a significant number of cloud cu cloud customers. Um, sure it is. You know, given their long history and, and all the products. Right. Um you know, but to me, I, I look at that as, wow, half and half. Uh, you know, that'd be great right. if I could do, you know, the good half from the cloud side and the good half from the on-prem side and make that a, a solution. Uh, Darren, where, where, do you, where do you see uh, y your organization maybe in a, in a year from now? Do you think you will have made a decision and started moving, or uh, is it hard to predict? Uh, it's a lot hard to predict. Uh, I thought... You know, we're hoping to get that decision made this year and start down the road of implementation the first of the year. We've um, recently we've 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 shelved the ERP project for now, uh, and, and it's it's economy related, it's you know, financially related. We're uh, being a steel company with the China tariffs um, uh, and the lack of trade agreements at this point. It's kind of affecting our customers, which is now affecting us. Um, you know, we, we really feel that's going to clear up and uh, business will be great. And then we'll get back to the ERP project. But for right now, we, it's, it's kind of been put on hold. <clears throat> so you're directly being impacted by the steel issues? Uh, yeah, most certainly. Hmm. Well, you know, a, a big portion of our business is ranch and rodeo equipment and um, with the agricultural uh, tariffs or the agricultural lack of trade on the agricultural side, uh, it's hurt hurt that side of the business tremendously. 
and some of that's starting to creep over to the the steel side as well. Fascinating, interesting stuff. Uh, I've got a million more questions, but uh, I think Jason, if we you know make these three hour long podcasts, nobody's going to listen to them. <laughs> right. Yeah, no kidding. Great. Well, I'm I'm certainly interested to hear um, you know how things continue. I think um, it's it's great to hear uh, your your perspective on this because it's. You know, you, 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 I hear Microsoft's perspective all the time. I hear, you know, partner perspective all the time. But, um, you know, it's easy to overlook companies that have been on, you know, on an ERP for a number of years and, you know, have have certain skills, have 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 great wisdom in certain areas, but weren't the people that that the vendor was building the next generation for necessarily. Um, and, you know, it's. Uh, I'm fascinated to hear where where you do end up end up going next, and all the other uh, factors that that uh, play into it, like you were just talking about. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah. That's th- it. Thanks. <laughs> th- <laughs> yeah. Th- thanks Aaron, so much. Thank you Aaron. very much, man. F- fantastic. Uh, I really enjoyed it. It's a great stuff for great content. Great. All right. Well, I enjoyed talking to you. all. This has been another episode of the MSDW Podcast. My thanks to Darren Goebel and Peter Jekyll for joining me today. If you have any feedback, please get in touch. Jay Gumpert at msdynamicsworld.com. Until next time, this is MS Dynamics World, signing off.